Now I want to give the floor to Mrs. Jennifer Robinson, international parliamentarian, who is a great help for the Papuan in the struggle for freedom. You have the floor. I come here today to speak on behalf of international lawyers for West Papua. We don't speak for the people of West Papua, but we are a group of lawyers who are committed to speaking about the law and using the law as a tool to help and to protect the people of West Papua. International Lawyers for West Papua was formed to raise awareness about the West Papuans' right to self-determination to document that right, a right that has so far been ignored and a right that was denied to them in the late 1960s. We also seek to raise awareness about ongoing human rights abuse in West Papua, which have at their root the denial of the right to self-determination in 1969. Human rights abuses which continue today, continue each day, and I could stand here all day talking about them. But it's fitting and appropriate that we stand here today in the Netherlands, in the Dutch Parliament, to talk about West Papua's right to self-determination. West Papua was, of course, a Dutch colony on the path to independence, on the list of non-self-governing -self territories. It was a territory that was held by the Dutch on a sacred trust. A sacred trust under Article 73 of the United Nations Charter. Self-determination is the most fundamental right the most fundamental human right and protected by international law. That sacred trust under which the Dutch held West Papua and had promised them independence in accordance with their international obligations was passed in a dubious agreement, the 1962 New York Agreement, to Indonesia. That was an agreement between Indonesia and the Netherlands that agreed to provide, in accordance with the Dutch government's international obligations and Indonesia's obligations that followed, a vote for self-determination in accordance with international practice, which at that time required universal suffrage, one vote for every adult. Indonesia, of course, acted in breach of that agreement. One, uh, just over a thousand West Papuans were rounded up and forced to vote under threat of violence for integration with Indonesia. A clear breach of customary international law that existed at that time and the agreement between the Netherlands and Indonesia. The Dutch government's silence and failure to act in response to that egregious breach of international law renders them complicit with the breach as the rest of the international community. If the Dutch government, the Indonesian government, the international community had respected their international obligations with respect to West Papua at that time, we would be standing here celebrating decades of independence rather than decades of oppression. More than 100,000 West Papuans, and it's estimated up to half a million West Papuans, have been killed or disappeared since that time. They continue to suffer rape, torture, widespread oppression, their lands have been raped, environmental degradation on an enormous scale, their traditional lands stolen. And why? Because the Dutch government did not respect its obligations to provide them with independence as required by the UN Charter, as required by that sacred trust. It is important to revisit that history because it is that initial violation of the right to self-determination that is the cause of ongoing problems today. The Dutch government in the year 2000 commissioned a report that was written by Professor Drew Cleaver, published in 2005. That report clearly documents what happened. It clearly documents Dutch complicity and what took place. It clearly documents the oppression of the West Papuan people, the fact that they were not consulted in the negotiations between the Netherlands and Indonesia. The fact that the act of free choice held in 1969 was no true vote for self-determination. 
Of course, Indonesia did not cooperate with Professor Drew Lever and refused to allow him entry to Indonesia to examine the files or to interview anybody in West Papua. And why? Because they are scared of the truth being revealed. Even today, journalists and human rights defenders, international organisations, are not permitted entry to West Papua because they do not want the world to know what goes on there. We cannot stand by and allow this to continue to happen. Even looking as far back as the 1950s, when Indonesia and the Netherlands were investigating and trying to come to an agreement about what would take place, Indonesia refused the offer to take the case to the International Court of Justice. Why? because they know they did not have the right to West Papua under international law. That position continues today. The act of free choice was an egregious breach of the right to self-determination as protected under the UN Charter. It was a violation of the sacred trust under Article 73 of the UN Charter. It was a breach of Indonesia's treaty obligations to the Netherlands. But mo most fundamentally, it was a breach of the right to self-determination of the West Papuan people, and we must revisit it. If we look today at what's happening in West Papua, Benny's own case, a case that I was witness to 10 years ago when he was a political prisoner in, West, in a West Papuan jail, is indicative of what goes on today just last year, a Congress was held, the third Congress, at which West Papuans unanimously, again, voted for a fresh referendum for self-determination and declared their desire for independence from Indonesia. The people present at that peaceful political assembly were arrest, rounded up, arrested and beaten. The five leaders are now in prison in Indonesia, having just been convicted of treason for peacefully expressing their political aspirations. The room for West Papuans to speak freely about their views and their opinions is non-existent. They face criminal persecution and jail for simply raising their flag and for speaking out about their desire for independence. This is in clear breach, again, of international human rights law. And the conviction of those five men has received international condemnation. Their appeal is ongoing. Their lawyers in that case have been threatened with prosecution simply for defending those clients. We as international lawyers for West Papua will stand together with those lawyers in raising awareness about ongoing human rights abuse cases. But it's time that the international community stands up and starts putting this to the United Nations. It's time the Dutch government stands up and recognises its obligations, the sacred trust on which it held the territory of West Papua. And it's time it starts raising it in the international forum because they bear responsibility. They bear both legal and, in my view, moral responsibility. Thank you.